Hey everybody, it's Claire again with another craft video. This time we are going to be working on a project that we brought to the medieval theme last year. Stained glass windows. Let's get to it. The two main things that you're going to need for this project are something to trace and something to trace onto. A piece of clear plastic like a sheet protector would work perfectly or a Ziploc bag or even saran wrap in a pinch. You'll also need some Sharpies or other permanent markers to color with, aluminum foil for the backdrop, and a piece of cardstock or cardboard that's the size of your paper for your backing. If you're using something two-sided like a sheet protector or a Ziploc bag, you can just go ahead and cut it in half so you have only one layer. For the sheet protector, that would give us two pieces that we could use for two different projects. The Ziploc bag, because the logo, will probably only get one out of. If you're using saran wrap, make sure that you have a fairly heavy duty variety and then tape it down to your tabletop so that it's nice and tight. Um, otherwise, you might wrinkle up the plastic or tear it as you're doing your tracing. And really get it nice and stretched out there. As you start to trace, if you find that your Sharpie is too brand new and too sharp, it might dig into the plastic a little bit. If that's the case, you can go really slowly or try to find a Sharpie that's a little bit worn down. You don't want something that's all out of ink, but if it's not so pointy at the tip, it would go a little bit easier. And you're just going to take that and outline all of your outlines and then color it in. to use something like a Sharpie, a permanent marker, because a Crayola or a washable marker isn't going to stay as well on uh, plastic surfaces. So you definitely wouldn't be able to do this with Crayola or that kind of marker. If you don't have a coloring book that you like the pages of well enough to do this project with, it's pretty easy online to find stained glass style coloring pages. There are some awesome Disney ones available that I found online that you could download and print. Um, I would love to see someone do a Beauty and the Beast style one. Or honestly, anything that you want to make, I would love to see. Um, this is a lot of fun and it, you end up with a pretty cool final product. Now I'm trying to remember to work from left to right here because as the marker is drying, if it's still a little wet, it can definitely smear or get all over your hands as you're working. If you work from left to right, if you're right-handed, um, you can avoid some of that. If you're left-handed, opposite, working from right to left will keep your hand out of the wet marker. I don't hold to it super well, it's hard for me to remember but that is best practices. So if you can remember to go from left to right if you're right-handed or right to left if you're left-handed, you'll keep your hands cleaner and your lines crisper. Now once you finish it up, grab your cardstock or cardboard, scrunch up your aluminum foil and then carefully flatten it out and then tape down that aluminum foil around whatever your backing board is. This is just going to give you a nice solid foundation. It'll be easy to display and it'll keep it a little bit sturdier. And then you're going to untape your plastic, turn it over so that the marker side is down. That'll help keep it from smudging over time and you have a finished piece. Hope some of you will give this a try and please post pictures of your finished pieces.